Hey guys, in today's episode we have a few new hints about the next update, the 20 win challenge is well underway, and CRL Season 2 will be horizontal. All that and more in today's episode of Clash World. Hey guys, it's right here and welcome back to another episode of Clash Worlds. In this weekly show, we take a look at the most recent announcements from the Clash Royale team, the hottest topics in CR Esports, as well as what's going on in the community. Then, we'll finish out the episode by breaking down the meta and featuring my off-meta deck of the week. If you're enjoying Clash Worlds, then please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified of every new video that comes out. Also, go check me out on Twitter, I'm pretty active on there now, so the link to it will be in the description. This week, not too much has happened, so it'll be a bit of a shorter episode, and with that out of the way, let's get right into the first section. New in the arena. First things first, let's check out the recent weekly update from the dev team. We have been continuing work on the update, finishing up a new UI and a new card or two. Alright, a new UI, not sure if that means the user interface of the whole game or just a change to a single feature, but either way, I hope it will somehow make things better. But what I'm most excited about is the new card, or two new cards. Now, Supercell has been doing a much better job at not leaking their new cards because I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue what either of them could be. Sneak peeks, please? Again, there really wasn't much from the dev team this week, so that's gonna do it for a new in the arena and it's time to check out the eSports update. The eSports update is a segment where we take a look at new and rising pro players as well as recent eSports competitions. Now of course, the 20 win challenge has kicked off and boy is it difficult. I still haven't managed to get those 20 wins, although I did get 19 wins on my second attempt. Now this challenge is pretty great, the rewards are absolutely stellar, and that exclusive emote, oh man do I want that. So I'll keep grinding on that challenge and be sure to let me know how many wins you got in the comments section below. Next up, CRL did a short Q&A about the upcoming Clash Royale League Season 2. First things first, you have to be 16 years of age by March 1st to participate. Now I'm sure most of you aren't quite interested in the rest of the stuff about getting involved in the esports scene, but if you are, link will be down in the description. But here's the biggie, CRL Season 2 will be horizontal. Oh shoot, that song's copyrighted, don't play it. Anyway, now that we're caught up with the most recent esports news, let's check out the rising rumors. First things first, if you wanna summarize the CRL 20 win challenge in a single picture, it's gotta be this one by Squidge on Reddit. I mean, it's so true. Next up, we've got a crazy edit by G7, along help me on the Reddit. Trying to get the P.E.K.K.A. to reach the tower, be like, <sighs> Oh my god, what an amazing edit. I'll link to the post down in the description. And finally, we've got an interesting idea for the next Clash Royale update. The idea basically comes from a small quality of life change from Clash of Clans. Basically, in the next update for Clash of Clans, they are introducing a new leadership rotation feature. Basically, if the clan's leader hasn't been active at all for 90 days, the leadership will automatically be passed on to the co-leader who has been in the clan for the longest period of time, as long as he or she has been active in the past 60 days. Now, this is definitely very interesting and a somewhat controversial feature, so be sure to let me know your opinions on this possible change in the comments section below. Now that we've covered the trending topics in the community, let's go ahead and break down the meta. This meta has been a pretty meh one. Basically, the top meta decks are Pekka Ram, Royal Giant Lightning, Lava Hound Clone, Golem Prince, and this new Balloon Miner deck. It's a very interesting deck to say the least, and definitely is seeing crazy success in the 20 win challenge. Other than that, Expo is still seeing some usage in several different variations actually. So that's the meta for you guys, and now let's check out the off meta deck of the week. That 
That's right, in each Clash Royale episode, we're going to be featuring one-off meta deck that works in the current meta. This week's deck was submitted by Chispatuz CP, and it's a Balloon Graveyard deck. With the dual win conditions, you can really catch your opponents off guard, especially since this deck really does look like a Graveyard deck. In addition, the double buildings can also be quite clutch on defense, and you also have some quick pressure with the Bandit. Now, you want to play this deck like any other graveyard deck, quite slowly at first, trying to make those positive trades on defense, and then counter pushing with either a graveyard or a balloon when needed. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into a battle. Alright, so hopping into this battle, we're going to be against Paula Dragon from the clan Valencianos 2.0. And uh, good luck to this guy starting off this match. We're going to go ahead and just go with the bandit in the back. Kind of want to get this battle started. You do want to play passively, but you know it's also nice to get started in single elixir time. So here, unfortunately, not exactly the best hand. Don't want to go with an inferno tower. So we're just going to go ahead and zap to cycle to... Oh, never mind. I guess we are going to uh, with our inferno tower. So there we go. Inferno tower will absolutely absolutely chop up that P.E.K.K.A. and we can also go with the Skeleton Army which will distract both the E.Wiz as well as the Inferno Dragon. So really successful defense right there. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, we probably have a pretty big Elixir advantage and one thing that I do note is that he used his E.Wiz and his Inferno Dragon. That is two of probably his best air counters. So let's actually go with a Balloon and a Bandit. I don't think he has too good of an air counter. Okay, he has Ice Wizard and okay, let's quickly zap out those bats and there we go. As you can see, I doubt he has any other air card and that Balloon is going to be getting a connection on the tower. So as you can see, uh, we are being very careful and as soon as we saw that his air defense cards were out of hand, we went in with that Balloon and caught that tower right there. So uh, let's just go with an Ice Spear right here quickly to cycle to that Skeleton Arm and uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and place down that skeleton army to take out that royal ghost right there. And as soon as we take that out, let's just go ahead and go with a furnace in the back. Trying to get some chip damage, always gotta start working on the second tower in case one of ours does go down. So anyways here, uh, 20 seekonds away from double elixir time. He's gonna go with another P.E.K.K.A. So obviously the inferno tower is gonna go down. Let's go with the bandit right there, which will go ahead and actually take out that E-Wiz right there. Uh, let's go with the zap onto that stuff right there. And uh, there we go. Inferno Tower is going to absolutely uh, finesse that P.E.K.K.A. right there. And um, going into Double Elixir time, I haven't even played my Graveyard yet. So obviously we can save that as a bit of a surprise card. So here he's going to go with an Ice Wizard right there. Let's just go with an Ice Spear in the back. Cycle to another Furnace and go ahead and get that down immediately. Here, let's just go ahead and go uh, with an Inferno Tower. That'll go ahead and try and chop up all this stuff right there. And uh, let's see, let's go with a Bandit in the back. And he's going to go in with a P.E.K.K.A. right there. So Bandit's going to go ahead and take care of both of those wizards right there. Let's go with a Skeleton Army. And look at that, he's just used a ton of air counters again. So let's actually go with a Balloon and a Graveyard in the center. Uh, actually, wait, are we going to defend this push? Uh, okay, we're fine. Let's go with a Graveyard right there. And then the Balloon in the center to tank. He has um, Goblin Gang, so let's go ahead and get a Zap ready to take that out. There we go, taking out the Skeleton Army. I mean, the Goblin King. Unfortunately, we botched that up. But Balloon's still going to connect onto the tower. 15 seconds left. Let's go with a Bandit it in the center that thing's gonna dash onto the tower there we go and hopefully take that thing down there we go solid two crown victory he's barely even gonna scratch our towers and that is a very very solid victory against a pekka control deck so gg right there just showing you guys how effective this deck is so there we go, the off meta deck of the week. I definitely recommend you guys give this deck a try. Really fun to use. The dual win conditions really switches up your gameplay and is just really unexpected for your opponents. If you want to submit your own deck to be featured, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legendary Ray, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.